Okay, so my most rewatched movie is not, a, maybe not a brilliant movie, maybe not the best movie of all time, maybe not even my favorite movie, but those are all lies because it is Hot Rod, which is just the most ridiculous comedy film ever. Um, and completely underrated because it's fantastic and so stupid and wholesome. It's just ridiculous. All the jokes in it are stupid, like the cool bean scene and when he's on top of the hill going whiskey. And when every time they bless each other when they're going to fight with the spirit of the bottlenose dolphin, it's just ridiculous. It completely appeals to every single footy bone in my body and I hate it. I hate that this is me, but Hot Rod is the film that I've seen time and time again. Like it's the first film I actually like bought and downloaded because like it's like on my iPod on my actual like iPod classic I downloaded this film so I could watch it any time of day wherever I was and on this tiny screen I used to hold it here and watch it and just giggle to myself for like an hour and a half going woohoo hot rod song I saw it so many times and now now I'm talking about it it may have been quite sad but it, it was it was good it was a good time I'm gonna go and watch it when I get home now because the hot rod now, I figure most people are gonna come in here and talk about films they're really passionate about. They love watching. They could be classic films, they could be guilty pleasures. For me, this is kind of neither. The Mask of Zorro is a film I've seen mm, about 100 times and not necessarily out of choice because we went on holiday, like a family holiday to France and the place we were staying had a VHS player, retro, even then, and the only tape that they had that came with the house that we stayed in was The Mask of Zorro. So what are you gonna do in an evening when you're 12 years old and on holiday with your parents? So watch The Mask of Zorro again and again and again until I can talk for hours on end about it and quote it incessantly. Then my favorite line isn't actually really a line from it, it's just, Anthony Hopkins saying, Don Diego de la Vega. Um, and yeah, watching that scene where Antonio Banderas cuts Catherine Zeta's clothes off in, I think, stables with your parents every night. I was going to say it doesn't get any harder, but I'm not <laughs> going to say that. But yeah, it's a classic. For me, it's going to have to be uh, Blade 2 because that is the finest action movie that Mr. Wesley Snipes has ever done uh, and possibly the finest superhero thing ever done, ever made, ever put to film. Um, I love every single second of it. I think Guillermo del Toro did a fantastic job. I love the look of the Reapers. I think they're called Reapers. I might be thinking of Mass Effect. Maybe they're called Reavers. doesn't matter. The vampires with the splitty chins. Um, he invented them. And the, yeah, the, the whole this whole idea that there's this weird strain of vampires that are on the loose and they're sort of like these weird monsters and they need to be put down and they're all festering and living inside the sewers and none other than Blade can go and take care of them. I just, I love all the choreography in it. I love the style. Like, I love the art direction. I think um, if you read into the, the making of stuff, del Toro had a little sketchbook where you would sketch out all these like minging, horrible, disgusting ideas for enemies and they made every single one of them um, and it just looks brilliant. I just, I think you can tell that Wesley Snipes is having an absolute blast in the role um, and I, yeah, there's not a, a single frame of that movie that I don't think belongs. So I, I must have seen that hundreds of times. I actually had it on video when uh, I was in school um, and I had to get it imported, imported, I had to get it um, illegally pirated in because the, everyone knows a friend when you're in school who can get, you know, the illegal things. And, uh, and they brought me a video cassette in and I just watched it on, on loop on, over and over again and then bought it on DVD and bought it on Blu-ray. I wish I was watching it right now, to be honest, but it's, yeah, Blade 2. Blade 2? Blade 2. Also Kung Fu Panda. Uh, my most rewatched movie ever is Shaun of the Dead. I actually was going to wear a Winchester top today because I really, really love this movie and all oh, you've got, I guess I forgot, so you've got Wham Chester. I'll kick you off that, Chester. <laughs> Other than that though, I think it might genuinely be like the best movie of all time. I know a lot of people like Hot Fuzz or maybe The World's End or Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, but all Edgar Wright movies have in common are like that real good sense of rewatchability. There are jokes upon jokes upon jokes hidden in the background and then you don't get them all in the first time round. Like I didn't know that when Sean tells David to uh, F off four eyes, he's not actually wearing his glasses, Ash. 
the joke doesn't come through. You don't notice that until it's about five watches in. It's just so dense with like gags, but then there's also like great storytelling material that you can only mine out uh, after like multiple watches or a jump into the IMDb trivia page where you find out all the foreshadowing, which obviously I did. Um, it is brilliant. I think I could genuinely recite the first 10 minutes of that film just like off by heart. I know you're gonna do that. I can't actually do that, but I could go from the last orders, please, right up until uh, Ed says, um, do any of you C words want a drink? I think I could actually do that. Um, the director's commentary is actually really good. It's what got me into cinema. So not only have I watched this movie over and over again on its own, but I've also watched the director's commentary like 20 times because it's just so fascinating and Edgar Wright is so good and Simon Pegg is so funny and Nick Frost. <laughs> Every single bit of the Shaun of the Dead package is brilliant. It's got a tightness, in my opinion, that Hot Fuzz doesn't quite have. You can just stick Shaun of the Dead on and just have a rollicking good time, even if it's on in the background or if you're really attently attuned. There's always something there, and it's brilliant. So, I'd like to say that it's like The Dark Knight or like Citizen Kane. As the film editor for this website, this illustrious website, I should have a film like that, that's my most watched, re rewatched film. But it isn't, it's clueless. And I'll tell you for why. So when I was a young girl, at the age of about, let's say 14, I think I was, um, I went through a phase, blossoming as a person, as a young woman, <laughs> um, and for some reason, and I don't know, I still don't know why, I watched Clueless every day for the six weeks holidays, because it's very good. Um, so I really love Paul Rudd, probably because of that. And every time he told Cher that she was beautiful, it was like, that really gets me. So I watched it every day. And then I had to go back to school. And, and nothing has caught up to that. I've watched things like Sleepless in Seattle a lot of times. I've watched When Harry Met Sally a lot of times which are equally not very cool to admit, I would say. But I still watch Clueless probably five times a year. And I still love it. My most rewatched movie of all time. Um, cheating would probably say Star Wars, because when I was little, I used to like plonk myself in front of the TV. And I, I think one of the first things I ever read was just the the credits, so I just plonk myself in front of the TV and just read the the credits going down just repeatedly because that, that's the best thing ever. Like a film that tells you what it is when you're three is like amazing. Um, but the film that I've probably seen the most uh, based on how many times I spend uh, staying up too late on a Friday night and browsing uh, film four, it's probably Lethal Weapon 2. Not the first Lethal Weapon, even though that is a fantastic movie and a true contender for one of the best Christmas films of all time. Sorry, Die Hard. Um, Woo. Lethal Weapon 2 is great and like you know how sequels are always on TV all the time it's like Channel 4 always show Ghostbusters 2 but not the first Ghostbusters Lethal Weapon 2 is a similar thing except Lethal Weapon 2 might be better than the first one because you know it has crazy South Africans and they always come in and then he at the end he's there he thinks he's won he goes diplomatic immunity and then and then Riggs uh, Murtaugh shoots him and goes it's just been revoked it's one of the best films ever and just one of those films you always find yourself watching when you die on a Friday night when you're back home for the holidays which is you know it's lovely it's just really nice and out of all the action movies of the late 80s I think Lethal Weapon 2 is probably probably the best do you know what I want to do now before we, uh, we now we're finished is I'm gonna challenge the editor. I'm gonna wave my hand in front of the camera and I want him to cut a Z into the next person. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do it backwards or what, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So like Zoro. <laughs> Whatever he says. Zoro, <laughs> so, well like, like Yoda. Okay. Is that backwards? Have I done it backwards? <laughs> How do you do a Z? You call me Big Head. No, it's too much head spit. Actually, no, wait. Oh, what? That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Somebody made, left a YouTube comment saying my head did not match my body. <laughs> that was nice of them. Don't believe that. Where Molly what is and Ma? Charlotte dead. What is the <laughs> What's just happened? What's just happened there? Stay exactly where you are. Just stay exactly where you are. What? Just stay exactly where you are. No, no, move your hands. Because you got it stuck on your little chin. <laughs> Hey! <laughs>